Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May its soul be rekindled with fire from above. Alleluia, thine the glory. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, thine the glory. Revive us again. Good afternoon, everyone, and allow me to wish you a happy Sabbath. I hope you are all well. So, Tuba, we first met at uh, the Alive Conference in 2016. Yes, at the Children's Corner during Sabbath School. Yes, yes, you led them to sing the what and virgins when the bridegroom came. I think now you can remember. Yeah, that's where I first interacted with you, and I'm delighted to be here this afternoon. I hope all the souls that are here are well and ready to be blessed. I am ready to be blessed. And before I dive into my sharing this afternoon, let's pray. Dear Lord in heaven, I thank you so much for your love. I thank you so much for your tender mercies, Lord. And I thank you for the gift of sharing. Thank you that you've allowed us to meet here from different parts of the world, but then we're able to meet from our comfort spaces in our homes. So Lord, we actually don't take that for granted, but we just want to say thank you. Now, Lord, we know that um, sometimes the technology can be shaky. And so we give you permission to please take control. May you strengthen everything that needs to be strengthened to make this message clear, practical, and simple to everybody who's going to watch or to listen to this message. Father, I pray that if there be any obstacle in any of our hearts that will keep us from hearing your voice and that will keep us from receiving your blessings, please take it away. Thank you for having heard and answered my prayer through the merits of Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Set Apart, for setting this time apart for us to meet. And Marcel, thank you so much for also providing this platform that each one of us may be strengthened even as we grow um, in faith every day. So hunger, pain, confusion, disappointment, rejection, the repenting cycle, failure, delays, denial, ambivalence. Now, these are some of the many difficult or rather emotions or feelings that we face every day. And a repeat of these experiences can be overwhelming to the soul. It wearies the soul, it breaks the heart, and steals our hope. And when our hope is stolen, then we have no strength to choose tomorrow, or we have no desire to plan for the future or then life doesn't make sense. So when our hope is stolen, then the joy to live is equally stolen. And these, these experiences can drive our hearts away from God and we can easily find helpful ways to meet our pain or we can easily find little moments of pleasure which will end up being addictions that end up being very difficult for us to break. And <clears throat> some of these addictions are not bad things. It could just be that you're doing a little more of something nice, but you have been doing it and it's a cycle, but then you're not satisfied. You're not finding peace, neither are you finding rest. Probably the Sabbath has been a normal thing for you, just an ordinary day. Maybe it has been a formality for you. Maybe your devotions have been a formality. You're doing it as an obligation. You are praying so that God can do this and this and this. Or you are serving so that you can win love or so that you can find your worth in the service that you are doing. So probably this has been your life and you notice it, but then you're avoiding it. So you're in denial. Maybe you have sought for help and help has not come through. 
maybe the help has been through prayer and you feel as though God is not going to answer or to hear your prayers. Maybe you have prayed for many years like Hannah and you've reached the point of giving up in life. Or maybe you're in a maze of confusion. Now God cares so much about you and he has not forgotten you. And for this reason, he made a plan for you. What was the plan? The plan was that Set Apart Ministries and Muscle should come together and provide time every evening for us to meet together, to reason with God, to hear from other messengers and find our path back to him or find clarity in the path that he has created for us. In the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, the Bible says, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, what does this rest mean? So rest means that God wants us to accept by faith what he has done for our redemption. God wants us to choose to receive the gift that he gave us when we could not save ourselves. God would like you to receive his help today to overcome that cycle of repenting and sinning and repenting and sinning and repenting and quitting and going back. He wants to break that cycle for you and he wants you to receive that help from him. And so God wants to set us apart this week by bringing light to those of us who are dwelling in darkness. God wants to bring life to those of us who are dead in sin. God wants to recreate us in his own image and to restore us to our initial perfection, which is his way of perfection and not our way of perfection. And then when we choose to receive his presence, so how do we choose to receive his presence? We invite him into our lives every day. And by choosing to set time as we begin the week, every evening, to just come and pray together and to read the Bible and to listen to his voice keenly, then truly you will have his presence. When, we ch when you choose to invite his Holy Spirit in your heart, then truly you will have his presence. Because be before Jesus went back to heaven, he said, when the Holy Spirit shall come into your heart, then I and the Father will come and make an abode in your heart. And so when we receive his presence, then we will begin experiencing his redemptive work in our lives by resting in him and in what he has already done for us. You see, in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18, reminds us that Jesus suffered being tempted, and yet he did not sin. Therefore, he's able to rescue you when you are tempted. You see, Jesus did for you what you cannot do for yourself. Temptation exists as long as we will be alive in this world. But then Jesus gives us an option of not falling into the temptation by receiving him into your heart and reflecting on how he overcame and therefore he's able to help you overcome. The same book of Hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 and 16 says, 4, 15 and 16 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold, or oh, that's verse 14. Let us hold fast our confession. Verse 15, for we do, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, 
but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we have been promised that we are going to obtain grace and we are going to find mercy and then we are going to find help in time of need. Now, I do not know any human person who lives in this world who never needs help at any moment in their lives. When you think that you have overcome this particular temptation or this struggle, when you think that you have overcome this challenge, then another challenge comes. You know, it's like a domino effect. When one, one challenge is over, then another and another, it's like a ripple effect in your life. And the beauty of challenges is that Jesus promised in, Matthew, in John chapter, is it John 16, 33? Yes, John 16, 33 says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have many tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So Jesus spoke these things. What are these things? You know, the things about the things that uh, Christ was, was talking about receiving the Holy Spirit and how the struggles that we go through will turn into joy. The sorrow that we experience will turn into joy. And he has said, he mentioned these things so that we may have peace. Why do we have peace? When you are going for when you are going for a safari or when you're planning an event and then you have the expert. The expert is the one who's um, at the topmost of planning and organizing that event. Many times you'll be at peace because you've seen their work and you know that ah, as long as I have this guy in my crew, I know things will work out. So now in our lives, this guy is Jesus. This guy is the creator of the universe. This guy is God. This guy is the prince of peace. He's the king. He's the king of kings. And he's the, he's the great judge. And he's also your advocate. So this guy, this expert guy, is the one who's telling you, so I've told you the things that will come to pass so that you may have peace. So how do we get this peace? He goes ahead to say, for in the world, you are going to face many tribulations, but be of good cheer. That's so contrasting. As in, how do you become of good cheer yet you're going through many tribulations? Okay, let me tell you what tribulations are. Tribulations are not sleeping hungry for a day. Tribulations are losing your job, not being able to pay rent for three months. You're being thrown out. You've not, you don't even know where your next meal is going to come from. You have borrowed and borrowed and borrowed money and you don't even know how to pay back. You have been visiting people so that you can have lunch at their places or dinner or breakfast. And now you don't even know how to face tomorrow. Tribulations are not things that you can get yourself out of. Tribulations are losing your loved one, your immediate family member. Tribulations are being denied the chance of, of going to the next level in your school just because somebody was biased. Tribulations are things that make life to lose sense completely. And then Jesus says, you're going to face those things that will make life lose meaning, but then be of good cheer. Now, this can only come from him. Jesus is the only person who is indicated in the Bible. He was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, yet on this other side, he was able to mingle with children. How he did that, only God knows. And I would love to have that power of being in sorrow and still being cheerful. Because the Lord has said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And that which Jesus says is truth. Therefore, it can happen to you and it can happen to me. I know that the COVID experience has 
rubbed us off badly, truly badly. And I know that many of us have reached the point of even questioning the existence of God. We have even questions, questioned our existence. We have even questioned why we even started some of the things that we started in life. But I would like to remind you the same words that Jesus reminded the disciples. Though you will suffer these many tribulations, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. And this week, my prayer is that each one of us will find time and space to let God search our hearts and allow him to dig deep into the quadri of our hearts by his grace and mold our character that we may reflect his character as well. And I pray that as we keep dwelling in his presence, we will rest in the fact that Jesus died for our sins and he has given us forgiveness and eternal life as a free gift. Guys, you see, we don't have to buy redemption. You cannot buy God's love because God loves you already. I know that probably growing up, we were cultured in such a way that we have to do things so that we can feel accepted. That we have to be bribed so that we can be kind and nice or so that we cannot speak out the hurtful things that we are going through in our hearts. But God is not like that. God is a clean person. In Isaiah 1, 18, he invites us to come and reason together with him. You know, even after you have sinned, just because you felt as though God has not helped you, and therefore you have decided to die in your sin, God still extends a hand of invitation and he says, Come now, let us reason together. God is not the kind of parent who will tell you, but don't you know that doing this and this will result to this and this? Now you've fallen because you went there. You've fallen because you didn't tie your shoelaces. That is not how God works. God cares for you so much and he feels your pain. Again, the Bible reminds us that he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And being a savior who suffered, therefore, he feels you. He feels your pain. Even the pains that you cannot utter, he reads directly into your soul. So this week, it's my desire, or rather, I would want you to invite God that you may go through the pain that you're going through together with him. Ask him those difficult questions that you have and wait for him to answer you. Because he has promised in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3, it says, call upon me and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things that you know nothing. No, Jeremiah 33, 3, sorry, 31, 3 is the Lord has appeared of appear to me of old saying, I have loved with an everlasting love and with loving kindness have, you, have I drawn you. 33.3 says, call unto me and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things that you know nothing about. So I know there's so much that you know nothing about yourself. I know the question of who are you is something that you struggle with. It is something that you dread. Probably that's why you, you've been running away from interviews. Because you'll be asked, so who are you? Tell us about yourself. And you have nothing to tell them. Because all along, people have been defining you. And the people who have been defining you are no longer in your life. Therefore, you see no reason to live. But I would like to remind you today that Jesus reminds us that he has called you by your name. He has called you, Tuba, by your name. He has not called you by your surname, no, by your name, not by your title, but by your name as his child. And he says that he has redeemed you and you are his child. So God knows 
a lot of things that you don't know about yourself. And he wants to reveal to you these things. Probably these are some of the things that have been, have become an obstacle in your life that you're not able to progress. You feel stuck. You feel as though you're zero grazing. You feel that your life is a cycle of endless confusion and you feel as though you are doomed. Today, I would like to tell you that though those thoughts are there, they are not the truth. Though the devil may bring these thoughts to you and sound as though they are your own thoughts, that is not the truth. And that's why we need to go back to God and read from his word because Hebrews, again, Hebrews remind, reminds us, I'll get it, I think it's Hebrews 4.12. Yes, it reminds us that God's word is living. It's alive and it is sharper for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So what don't you know about yourself? God would like to reveal to you. He's not, he's not going to just reveal to you what is in your heart and leave you alone as you are. No, he wants to help you. As he's inviting us to give him our burdens, he's going to give us his yoke in exchange. And we won't just be walking alone, but we are going to walk with him. For he says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Again, he says that he is meek and lowly in heart. So what does that mean? Sometimes it's our pride that makes our burden to be heavier than how it actually is. And sometimes pride means I can do it on my own. I am okay, I don't need help. Sometimes pride means because I am hurt, I'll keep hurting myself. Sometimes pride means withdrawing from help that we know has been offered to us or has been extended to us. So my prayer this afternoon is that may God soften our hearts. May he take away pride. May he take away self-righteousness from us. And may he truly shine his light of righteousness in our hearts that you may see the true state of our hearts and surrender to him. Now, surrender is not an easy thing, but surrender is sweet. There's joy that comes with surrender. I know you like and you really enjoy having control in your life. And probably that's why you decided, me and God, we are not going through the same lane. Let's keep our lanes, no? It is easier and sweeter to walk with Jesus in that narrow path. Because wider is the road that leads to destruction. But narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And this narrow way may feel strange, but our, our guide, our master, our tour guide, the expert in this safari knows that, knows that narrow path. He has been there before. He knows the corners that are darker. He knows where you can be bruised. And therefore, he will shield you as you choose to walk with him, as you choose to let him be your guide, because he has chosen you to bring glory to him in this world. Guys, you see, God is a sower. And every day, he brings seeds and he plants them in our hearts. That these seeds may grow in us and we may be fruitful, produce more fruits, and for every fruit there's a seed in it. That when other people appreciate these fruits, they too may find a seed to be grown in them. So I don't know how barren your land has been. I don't know how bare it has been. I do not know how much drought you have in your life. But I know a God who can make it rain even when rain has not been predicted. I know a God who wants to change your mourning into gladness and into dancing because 
your sadness because your pain concerns him. I know a God who is so interested in bringing the beauty that you have been covering with the ashes that are in your life. And this is the God that I'm presenting to you this afternoon. Will you give him a chance? Just this one time. Just this one time. Will you give him a chance to make a difference in your life? Okay, I don't say it will be easy, but I know it will be bearable and it will be worth it. I'm not saying that your situation will change, but I know that you may even have peace in the storm. Just how Christ was able to sleep in a storm. Like who does that? Who sleeps in a storm? So this is the man I'm talking about. The Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to bring to life the dead areas of your life. He wants to bring to birth the barren places that are in your life. Not only for your sake, but for his name's sake and for the sake of other people who would like to know him or who are also struggling and suffering in pain and in the darkness of this world. And so as we keep drawing in his presence, we will have rest in the fact that we have his righteousness covering us. That when the devil comes to remind you about your past, the righteousness of Christ will glow on his eyes and he will disappear. That nothing can touch you unless the Lord has allowed it, has allowed it to happen to you. And we'll be, we'll be able to rest in the fact that the power of sinful nature was broken at the cross and we are free to serve the Lord. Unless we accept that Jesus gave us power to live right, then truly it will be hard for us to even look up to him for help. And then as we keep drawing into his presence, we will daily rest in the fact that Christ lives in us and we live out the life that he is living in us if we choose to let him do that. Now, guys, I don't know what you're going through in your life. I do not know what form of codependency you have in your life. But I have tasted the Lord and I have seen his goodness. And no matter what I face in life, I'm never returning back to my old self. Because the Lord did for me what no man could do for me and what I could not do for myself. And this is the savior that I'm presenting to you. I'm going to read to you Isaiah chapter 54. You can follow with me. Isaiah 54, it says, I'm going to read from the voice version. It says, sing, childless woman, you who have never given birth. So you place yourself in the woman part. So the Lord is addressing you. Raise a joyful shout, you who have never gone through labor, you whose husband is dead, will bring forth much more than the fertile one, who has a husband. Enlarge your house. You are going to need a bigger place. Don't underestimate the amount of room that you'll need. So build, build, build. You will increase in every direction to fill the world. Your offspring will take over the nations. Your people will revitalize long abandoned towns. Don't be afraid for there is no one to shame you. Don't fear humiliation for there is no one to disgrace you. The shame of your younger years and the sorrow of your widowhood are over. Do you feel stuck in life? Do you feel as though your peers or your age mates are excelling and you're just there? Do you feel as though a child whom you saw growing up has gone ahead of you and they're probably living a life that you desired to have? Do you feel that the pain that you're suffering now are as a result of your mistakes. Now the Lord is saying that he is redeeming you. And he's saying 
that nobody will even bring up the shame of your old of your younger self and then verse 5 continues saying because the one who made you will be your husband the one called commander of heavenly armies will set you right again the holy one of israel it's not for nothing that he is called god of all the earth for the eternal has called you to come back home like a young wife once deserted and deeply injured now god is pulling you close again like a spouse forgives he will take you back and reconcile and be reconciled now i will let you continue reading the verses i do not want to take away the joy of enjoying god speaking to you through these verses and so the lord again let me read for you the end of it it says this time verse 14 this time, okay, let me begin from verse 13. Everyone, everyone of your children, the people who call you home, will be students of the eternal. Oh, they'll be so happy and live in peace. KJV says, and your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. This time, verse 14, you will be founded and grounded on right thought, speech, and action. And no one will trouble you, abuse or oppress you. If you will know, no, you will know no fear and no worries. If a nation marches against you, know that I am not behind it. And he has promised to restore that which the devil stole from you or that which was broken in your life. He delights, to, he delights in healing you and he wants to bind, to bind your wounds so that he may use you to touch many other lives around you. Now the choice is yours. Will you give him a chance to walk, with, to walk you through the pain and then give you healing. Because again, there can never be comforting without mourning. So are you mourning? God would like to comfort you. Do you feel confused? He has said that he's going to teach you with his eye and he's going to guide you. Do you feel lonely and alone? He has promised that he's always with you even unto the end of the world. Has he sent you and you don't know what to say? He has promised that therefore go, I will be with your mouth and I'm going to teach you what you're going to say. Do you feel as though you will die and you're afraid of death? Now Jesus died in your place and he resurrected again so that as you live in him, then even if you die, when he comes the second time, again, he will call you with that name that he has been calling you with every single day. And though we suffer pain, we suffer heartaches, we suffer rejection and disappointments in this world, Jesus has promised that he's coming quickly and he's going to redeem us from this pain. I would like to set apart time every evening to meet with the Lord and I believe that a set apart team and muscle will provide a link where you can share your prayer requests. And if you need somebody to pray with you, they're going to offer that opportunity because we are all going to stand together because Christ stood for us. We therefore are going to stand for each other. My prayer today is that God may give you the courage to receive the blessing that he has set aside for you this week. If that's your prayer, let's believe and pray. Gracious Lord in heaven, thank you so much for reminding us that we are never alone. Thank you for reminding us that you want us to give birth again. Thank you because you've reminded us that where the dead places of our lives are going to become alive again. Thank you, Jesus, for truly going through and suffering temptation so that when we are tempted, we can look up to you and you can rescue us from temptation. Thank you that there is no temptation which is strange in this life. 
and that God, for every temptation you have, packaged it with a way of escape. God, many of us are into confusion and in temptations that you're not even sure about how we got ourselves into them. So Lord, I ask that may you please open our eyes that we may see the way of escape so that we may be able to bear the challenges that we go through in life. Oh God, there are many cries that people are lifting up to you at this hour as I pray. I pray that you may hear them and you may answer them in a way that best glorifies you. For this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you.